They start the season unranked and finish smelling like roses. The 2022 Penn State Nittany Lions reestablished the blue and white as a top 10 power on the rise as a national contender. Hello everyone, I'm Todd Sadowski. What a long, fun trip it's been for the Nittany Lions. 11 wins, two losses. Begins with a come from behind victory at Purdue on a Thursday night in early September. And it finishes on the second day of January in the new year in Pasadena. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 43 Plus for a review of a tremendous year for Coach Franklin and Penn State. And for the next 20 minutes, we'll highlight some of the most important and entertaining moments from the Lions Rose Bowl winning season. Up first, a perfect September, which includes a late rally in Lafayette to knock off the Boilermakers. Go ahead and bang the world's largest drum for the Penn State secondary. It immediately announces itself as an impact unit from the get-go under new defensive coordinator Manny Diaz. Brenton Strange provides a big spark with a just try and bring me down score before the half. The Big Ten road opener on Fox 43 comes down to the final minutes when Sean Clifford redeems himself for a fourth quarter pick six with this delicate throw to Kevon Lee. A huge rally propels the Nittany Lions to a season opening road victory 35-31. Came down, we were losing, we were winning, we were losing. A lot of ups and downs, but we stayed true to ourselves. And that's the whole thing. We just got to stay true to ourselves and believe in each other. Just like the mascot that carries the Purdue students around campus, the opener is a Boilermaker special. The home debut arrives the next Saturday with the Beaver Stadium crowd anxious to greet them. Anticipation to catch a glimpse of a new star-studded quarterback and chills when they get to witness the true freshman duo of Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. Down goes Ohio. University, Penn State goes up for win number two. Mid-September brings something that's never happened before. A Big Ten team in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Penn State does the honors and leaves a lasting impression. Sure, Auburn has some very cool traditions. Lemonade at Toomer's Corner and the pregame Flight of the Eagle. And yes, they can hit and hit hard. But Penn State gets right up and dust themselves off. They put a thumping on the Tigers, and once they race past the defense and post the lopsided final, the traveling party is on in the stands after the game. The Nittany Lions are beginning to draw some attention. And we were really confident coming into this game. Didn't, didn't say anything about it, we just went about our business, um, and that's why I was so happy. An emotional high, usually followed by a slight letdown, not the sharpest performance in Happy Valley the next week, still more than enough to dispose of Central Michigan. They pounce on any Chippewa's mistakes and cash in. A strange day indeed with multiple touchdowns for the big target, the Nittany Lions are off and running. It is a spectacular September, 4-0 with the Nittany Lions climbing fast in the rankings. That's when they hit some roadblocks as they enter the meat of their schedule and October results in their only two setbacks of the year. Before a trip to the big house, a sloppy Saturday afternoon against Northwestern. They managed to leap over the Wildcats despite some careless turnovers. In the end, they muscled their way to the win with a strong touchdown run from Singleton and an even stronger goal line stand. For the second consecutive year, the Nittany Lions are 5-0. Despite a bye week in between, the Lions' run defense is diced up by Michigan. They have no answer for a straight-ahead punishing game plan that doesn't even bother to disguise their scheme. We're coming at you, and on this day, Penn State can't stop them. Sends the players and the coaches to the locker room with loss number one. <laughs> Ah, but what a sight to come home to, the annual whiteout, and it provides the energy and spark the team needs against Minnesota. Sean Clifford connects with tight ends Tyler Warren and Theo Johnson for scores, and then the running backs take over after the break. It's a whiteout blowout to send P.J. Fleck and the Golden Gophers underground. We were able to stick with the game plan and stick with the run. 
I thought we had a lot of diversity in our play calling tonight, whether it was play action pass shots, whether it was getting the tight ends involved, getting Parker Washington involved, and then those two running backs. Sets the stage for a showdown with Ohio State. Their chances are foggy, but it's a must win to stay in the national championship picture. And for most of the ball game, Penn State is more than up to the challenge. Allen's touchdown gives them the lead into the fourth quarter, and then it all goes horribly wrong in a hurry. A double-digit loss spoils what could have been an epic celebration. The Nittany Lions fall to 6-2. In 2021, Coach Franklin's guys spiral, ending up 7-6 after a 5-0 start. Not going to happen again. The Nittany Lions dig deep, go back to work, and get on a serious roll as they steamroll their final four opponents in November. We'll go in the order they crush them, but the result pretty much the same as PSU outscores their Big Ten opponents 165 to 40 to finish out the regular season. They check all the boxes on a road trip to Indiana. On a windy day in Bloomington, they take the air out of the ball and keep it ground level to run over the Hoosiers. It's all about the defense as they make turtle soup with Maryland in the second to last home game of the year. The Lions spend a good portion of the afternoon in the Terps backfield, making life miserable for the visitors from below the Mason-Dixon line. Penn State and their transfer from Maryland, Chop Robinson, send the Terps home with a goose egg on the scoreboard as they shut them out 30 zip. Final road trip of the season is Piscataway, New Jersey. Before we reach the stadium, we make a stop at Eric Legrand's Coffee House. The former Scarlet Knight still deals with paralysis from his injury over a decade ago. And despite his daily challenges, continues to inspire others. But being an athlete, being a football player, it's the grind to be, to be honest with you, because I think about all the opportunities that you get to actually play the game of football, it's really not that many games. But you think about the practices, the weight room sessions, the study hall, everything that goes into it, I kind of now adjusted that into my life. Like my game days are my game day victories when I start recovering, I start getting better. But it's the mindset of being able to work hard through therapy, through those practice sessions, being able to, when things don't go your way, being able to have, you know, not accept failure, but fail, be motivated by it and continue to push, learn how to work together as a team, learn how to become a leader, all the things I learned on the football field and being an athlete has now shifted into my life. It made my day to meet Eric in the press box at halftime. And as for the game, Penn State's defense scores more than the Rutgers offense. They register not one, but two scoop and score touchdowns. One more to go, senior day against Michigan State. The final go round for a really solid group of leaders and they go out in style. The Nittany Lions finish strong against the Spartans for a double-digit win season and then soak up some final memories before they walk off the Beaver Stadium field for the last time. What's this place mean to you? How do you, how do you put in words what Penn State means to you? I don't know. I can't, I can't thank Penn State enough, Penn State University, um, you know, starting with the, the president and all the way down to you know, our janitors in, in, in Lash. You know, everybody has always shown me love. Um, like I said before, people people are going to be critical, and but that's because this place is so special, and they demand excellence, and they demand the best, which is awesome. And, and that's what this place should be. They should demand the best. They should want to win every game. They should want to be elite because that's what this program deserves. Um, you know, am I am I bummed that I couldn't get it done all the way to that point? Yeah, but man, what a journey it was um, because. I wouldn't give up the memories that I have with the teammates that I have had and for anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just can't thank this program, this university, the fans, everybody that comes along with it enough. Hey, Juice, I'm going to take down or take in the last question since this right. is right here. But, but this is a day on the calendar that you know is coming. Right. right? It, on the season, it's not a surprise. Right. This is going to be your last home game. Right. So, what were you like leading up to this and then this day, how it all evolved and how it played out, man? What's going through your mind, you know what I mean, as a young yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah. His career I'm a, is coming towards the end. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, throughout the day, I was like trying to, you know, trying to avoid that. You know, I was thinking like just another game, just another game. And it really didn't hit me until the final buzzer, you know. 
the clock turned triple zero, and I'm just looking around like, whoa, like that's five years. That's, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, it's a, it was definitely emotional. It's a great feeling. And I'm just excited to prepare for the bowl win. It feels like yesterday we just saw you get your coffee at Big Ten Media Days with Teague <laughs> and Sean. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. just goes to show you how fast this thing rolls through. Time, time flies, man. You never understand it until it actually is here and uh, it's here. So it's it's uh, taking it all in, man, trying to enjoy it every moment because, uh, you know, the hourglass is running out. When their Big Ten rivals Michigan and Ohio State earn spots in the college football semifinals, the Nittany Lions slide into prime position for a berth in the Rose Bowl. The trip to Pasadena is the reward for a rebound season, and our local Lions get a taste of California. You know, the first bowl game that I'm a freshman and playing in is, is the Rose Bowl game. It's the granddaddy of them all. How could I not be I'm super excited for this? Coming to Cali from somewhere like Harrisburg, it's just a different type of experience. You don't get to see stuff that you see in Cali like all your life. Like You don't get to see that type of stuff often. It's so surreal. Just happy to be here at the Rose Bowl, let alone at that. So just getting all the fills in. Penn State goes toe to toe with a physical squad from Utah and knock out the Pac-12 champs in the second half. The winning formula works again, creates some turnovers and bust it open with explosive plays. It's only the second Rose Bowl win in program history, 35-21 over the Utes. here in 2016, one of the better Rose Bowl games and, and watch somebody else celebrate. Um, and I wanted this for them. And I couldn't have wrote the script any better for Sean Clifford uh, to be the offensive MVP and my man Tig to be the defensive MVP. Uh, it's awesome. I came up with uh, with some great leaders when uh, Trace McSorley and, and Tommy Stevens and Billy Fessler in the QB room. and great leaders on that team in 2017, the, the, the group that um, I was a freshman with. So just being able to, you know, see those faces of my teammates, it just means the world. Um, just couldn't be uh, prouder to be a Penn Stater. Of course, we documented the season every step of the way on Fox 43 and with our special program each week, Nittany Game Week. My co-hosts on the show are former Penn State coaches Jay Paterno and Tom Bradley, and I talk with them and Fox 43's Andrew Callista about the significant improvement made over the course of a few months. Well, I think it's better when you start out coming out of nowhere because you're not the hunted. Um, you are the one that's pursuing people. You can kind of go under the radar, and when you have a six-year quarterback, you know, that really helps in terms of a guy who's been through it a number of times a guy that's confident in who he is uh, and can provide the kind of leadership that you want. And I think that was a real benefit for Penn State and something that they'll, they'll, they'll need next year, someone to emerge like that. See, that's I agree. That was the biggest thing, having that six-year quarterback to be that leader. He's been through it. He's been around it. The guys trust him. They know they can trust him in the huddle. They know what he can do. I think the other side of the thing is I think he's had some guys on defense and understood what it was going to take to win and they were excited to play football this year. Tom, when you see this year's team, you see Manny Diaz, the first year coordinator, but you see some of the young guys, the teaching that's involved and the improvement that you see from week one all the way to the end, you can really improve a lot as a player on the field instinctively, you know, just in positioning, that type of stuff. What did you see from this year's team defensively as far as improvement goes? Young guys that got better, and one of the advantages is when you're like Coach Diaz and Terry Smith and those guys that are coaching defense, now they know from being with them for a year, hey, we can push the envelope more. They can handle this. In the beginning, they're not sure what they can handle. Hey, am I giving them too much? You know, they've got class. Is, is it, am I pushing the envelope too much? You know, what can they handle? And now they know, they understand, okay, these guys can do a lot of different things that they're comfortable with, and they know what they're comfortable with, which makes it easier for Coach Diaz to put a game plan together. The young running backs, I mean, that's true freshmen. Yep. Redshirt freshmen yep. don't get asked to handle the kind of load that the true freshmen got to handle. I mean, there was three, I guess, members of the true freshman All-American team from this squad. So how impressed were you, Jay, to see the, the true freshmen make it all the way through? Physically, it's different than a high school season. Um, and for those guys to, to make it all the way through and, and contribute as much as they did. I think the benefit was that there were two of them. 
so they could ship, you know, share the load. You didn't see one guy carrying the ball 27 times. You saw 14 or 15 carries, another guy had 12. So there was a lot of load sharing in terms of that, not just in running the ball, but with pass protection, things like that. So I think that was really critical. Those guys had the ability to, to, to split, the, split the workload, um, but certainly did some great things. I think there's a lot of room to improve. I think there's, you know, I think as, as good as we think Singleton is, there's some hook cuts he missed, some things he had. You know, no one's perfect as a freshman, but obviously a lot of upside for these guys still. As well as they play, still a lot of upside to go. And that's all going to be determined not next August. It can be determined now you've come in and it's been easy for you. You know, you, you've kind of been installed as the guy now you're going to go through winter conditioning, which stinks. I don't care what anybody says. It's not fun to get up at 6 in the morning and be in the little hall. And then you got spring practice, then you got a summer. And now you've got the load of expectation. One of the hardest burdens to carry is potential uh, and the expectations that come with potential. So now you've got to go and it's, you know, are you willing now that you one guy said, well, once a guy has silk sheets, will he get up and go to work? Theoretically, all the adulation, winning the Rose Bowl, you're going to have to get out of bed at an odd hour in the morning, and it might be eight degrees outside. You have to walk over to the Lash Building, go over to Luba Hall, work out at six in the morning. It's not fun. I don't care. But the guys say it is, they're lying. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in their mind, you know, here's what they got to understand is the Rose Bowl's over. You're next. You better start thinking. Hey, we got the Mountaineers rolling into town in the opener next year, and I know that's a way off, but that's where your mindset has to be. You were there at Purdue, and you were there at the Rose Bowl. You tell me, and it's a young team. How much improvement did you see from the beginning of the year when that first road trip at Purdue? This is an unranked team, and they go and they win the Rose Bowl. The difference between that team that you saw and only a few months later that you saw in Pasadena. Well, I think when you're talking about the differences between the Purdue game to start the year and the Rose Bowl against Utah is just the difference in offensive lines. I mean, against Utah, Sean Clifford was able to do a lot of things in the pocket. Against Purdue, it was the offense is sputtering. Is Penn State going to be able to run the football? Questions that we have seen year in and year out. And it's like, okay, here we go again. Penn State's blowing a game in the, in the second half. And instead, Sean Clifford comes out of nowhere after that interception got returned for a touchdown, leads a drive, and you just saw a lot of confidence starting to come through that team, whether talking to Brett and Strange after the game, talking to Sean Clifford. They felt confident in that moment. I'm not sure the fan base felt confident, but I'll tell you what, the fan base felt very confident going into that Rose Bowl game, even though Penn State was an underdog. Some of the moments that stand out to you, we had a lot of fun at Auburn. I mean, that was a lot of fun at Jordan-Hare. You have some great images that you, you captured this year, the Eagle, the you know, War Eagle at Auburn. Some of the things that stand out to you if someone were to say, hey, the 2022 season, what, what stands out about that year for you? Well, one, starting on a Thursday night, that stands out because that was pretty awesome to be on the road at night on a Thursday watching Penn State take on a Big, a big Ten opponent. And when at any time you're with Penn State on the road, I feel like for someone who grew up watching Penn State, there's something different about road whites especially under the lights. So that game definitely stands out. Down at Auburn in the SEC, you were there with me. You had a blast. I know you had a blast, Todd. I had a blast seeing more Eagle and the great traditions of college football in Toomer's Corner. Not to mention, it was a good time before the game. It was a good time after the game. It was a great time during the game watching Penn State physically dismantle an SEC team. And not only an SEC team, but an SEC team that has a very proud tradition of being tough-minded physically and, and mentally. So um, that, was, that was very fun to see. Um, going through the, Mich the Michigan game, um, there were moments there that you just thought, okay, this could be a turning point of the season. Being in the tunnel, watching what happened at halftime between Penn State and Michigan, that little scuffle, whether there's peanut butter sandwiches or whatever went on there, um, that was an experience that, that I'll never forget. But seeing how Penn State responded after, after that football game, with the whiteout against Minnesota, it's, okay, is Penn State going to give a game away like we've seen in the past? The Michigan State game comes to mind in 2018, but no, they responded. They ended up getting the win. Of course, the whiteout helps. And then being nine minutes away from a victory at home against Ohio State, it's legit now that you see how everything plays out. Penn State was nine minutes away from a playoff berth, and I think that's a turning point for the program because in years past, I don't really feel that Penn State would have responded off of losses like they did this year.
From an unranked team in the preseason to the Rose Bowl champions with a whole lot of fun and quality football in between, it's been a fantastic season to remember for fans of the blue and white. And we're thrilled to be with them from late July in Indianapolis for the Big Ten Football Media Days, all the way through the granddaddy of them all in Pasadena. For the entire Fox 43 Sports Department, I'm Todd Sadowski. Thanks for watching our Penn State football season in review.